Welcome to the PSR YouTube channel. Hey, I love YouTube. YouTube's awesome. It's awesome. You should become a YouTube creator. This video will get monetized. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're having lots of family fun now. Oh, yeah. None of these are real guns now. Oh, yeah. Also got a Patreon. The link is in the description. Got some merch too. Yeah, you know you wanna get some. Thank you for being patient. I think we've stroked the algorithm enough for today. The video starts in three, two, one. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of PSR. Today we've got something very spicy and very small. But before we get into it, I gotta say, I do this channel all by myself. So I make the music, edit the videos, don't have a cameraman, don't have an editor. This is all me. And I'm not just saying that to brag. It's a lot of work that goes into making these videos. And I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. That'd be greatly appreciated. If not, that's totally fine. You could always just leave a like and or subscribe. If that's not your thing, I'm not gonna force you. We're gonna get into this spicy build, but first, let's thank KAK Industry for being the channel sponsor for PSR. KAK Industry has been cranking out top-notch quality yet affordable AR parts and more for over 11 years. They're a great supporter because they like 3D stuff and they support my channel. So if you wanna get 10% off your order from KAK Industry, never, ever, ever use the code PSR for 10% off your order, entire order, baby. So thank you to KAK for sponsoring this channel. All right, so here we are. This is the subject of today's video. It is not additively manufactured. We do have a printed pistol grip here. Let's just say you might expect to find this on r slash cringe AR. And while it might be cringe in some people's eyes, I think it's based, bro. Why? Because it's absurd and it's small and boy, does it bark. It is a very tiny AR chambered in 5.56 NATO. Yes, we have a 4.75 inch barrel on here. It is stupid. However, the real special part about this, in my opinion, is this buffer tube. This is a micro buffer tube, small buffer tube system from KAK, and it uses a small buffer that you would not normally see in a normal AR. I'll show the comparison of the size between the buffer tubes. The tube on this one, bro, it's very small compared to a normal tube. There's no notches for any kind of pistol brace or anything like that. So this thing is completely compliant as far as the ATF pistol brace bullshit is concerned. We have here a Sharps Bros additively manufactured steel blast forward device. So hopefully this will help mitigate the flash. I'm not so sure it'll do that much, but it will kind of push it forward, thankfully. Inside the lower, we've got something kind of fast. That's all I'll say. This is a KAK lower, billet lower. Big thing about this is the takeaway is that it's very small, very concealable. You can put this in a backpack. This is what you wanted. So this is what you got. Thanks, ATF. On here, we have our Kenergy Barbie mag from the Mag Project. It is a Duramag and I love Duramags. I especially love my Kenergy mag. Oh yeah. That's hot. Now we have some very cheap sights on the top and I didn't want to put an optic on this thing because this is very much a 2009 Dodge Charger ass build. Arguably you wouldn't even have sights on here. I don't even think you necessarily need them, but I put them on there just for some practicality. We're gonna see how this thing shoots and I am kind of terrified to see how this goes, but I guess we have to do what has to be done. I might compare this to kind of like a Chihuahua, like a really loud one. Uh, that has a deeper bark but has no bite because the velocity of that 5.56 round coming out of this barrel is pretty much nothing. It's more or less a 22, a really loud 22. So without further ado, I guess we're going to have to try this thing. I'm kind of terrified, but let's do it. Oh, brother. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure about this one, dude. All right. I'm gonna just kind of put it underneath my, oh, it's so, so close to the fucking muzzle rod. i put it underneath my armpit and see if I can just uh, keep it down a little bit. Fuck me, dude. Oh! Bruh. Do we have one in here? 
Oh, it's still not done yet. Fuck me. Oh. Might have to lube this sucker. One last shot. Oh my god. Dude, that is fucking loud. Hi, I think my jaw got rearranged there a little bit. Oh. Oh. All right, guys, so look at this little buffer here. So that's the little guy. So it's so small and micro, but packs a big punch. Now, there's a couple different weights. I have a heavier one in the gun right now, but that's the little, small, little buffer size. It's so cute. As far as the size of the tube goes, that is the comparison. So it is a good two inches, I would say. If you can see that there, it's a good two inches shorter and smaller and there's no notches so it's just a round circle so perfect for putting you know a special device like a flashlight on um, you know as a cushion for whatever you might want to use it for all right i guess we're going to do this again a couple times unfortunately let's try uh let's try see if we can hold this a little differently you know kind of non-traditional style let's say you really don't want to get it even close to your shoulder we're going to hold it like this we're going to kind of do our overhand grip here. Let's try it. Oh, Christ. All right, I think I pulled it a little too hard there. Let's have a pull here. Here we go. Again. One more. Go. All right, so we're getting some malfunctions. I'm not so sure if it's just the way I'm holding it. Maybe I'm like a limp wristing it, so to speak. I don't know. Um, I guess we'll try it again from here. Fuck. Oh, Jesus, dude. And that's the last round. Okay. I want to check the backs, uh, those primers, see if they're light primer strikes or whatever, but ah, the things I do for you guys, that was terrible. All right, so given how small this thing is, I thought we should just see how well it fits in kind of a standard size backpack. I guess it's a little bit of a bigger backpack. There's absolutely zero issues putting it in this backpack. Furusa Leica, thanks for this backpack. The amount of little 2009 Dodge Charger AR pistols that you could fit in here, I would say you could probably fit four or five to be honest, there's a whole heck of a lot of room in there. So one for each of the passengers in your 2009 Dodge Charger. All right, next, I think I should see if we can get through a whole mag just dumping it without a malfunction. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened there. I think maybe I was just pulling it too hard and there wasn't enough support. So let's try it again and uh, we'll look at it in slow motion. I do have a very high speed slow motion camera, like 960 frames a second. So after this, let's try the really slow-mo and see what it looks like with the fireballs and all that good stuff. All right, here we go. Here's our U-Bar hardware mag from RK Spookware. All right, come on now. Oh Lord. Oh God, one, two. Three. Looks like we're having a little bit of trouble. <laughs> a little short boy, just like our AR. Huh. Maybe I need to clean the feet lips. Interesting. Jesus, I'm digging a hole over here. Oh, I would actually say the way this is performing is, you know, very unreliable. It's very clone correct to what you would find in the back trunk of a 2009 Dodge Charger. And, you know, it's intended to be really fired kind of one-handed like this, which probably even, you know, makes the reliability worse. So, in that sense, I think we're doing a great job. However, let me just say that this is perfectly reliable, this system, with a normal mil spec trigger, or just a normal trigger, okay? Let's just not get that twisted. This is very reliable, 
and the buffer system will work just fine if you just use normal trigger, okay? All right, now I say we do a little bit of uh, slow motion and we'll see what that looks like. Let's try 240 first and then we're gonna go 960 frames a second. All right, let's do it. Let's try 960 frames per second. Legalized nuclear warhead. Oh, holy shit, look at the fireballs on that thing. That's a 29% APR over 96 months ass pistol. Destroy your entire night vision tube ass pistol. That's of my asshole after a three crunch wrap supreme in a chalupa ass pistol. That thing do be shitting though. Legalized sarin gas. It might be micro, but only when it's soft, baby. Bro, you don't want this smoke ass pistol let him take a shit i said let him take a shit god damn it let him poo legalize nuclear warheads all right you guys so that didn't quite go as well as i'd expected but i guess i shouldn't really expected anything more from such an absurd build however like i said you use a normal mil spec ar trigger or like a cassette trigger that's normal this thing will work great i wish i had another lower that had the other buffer installed that i could show you it works fine, but I've tested it, works fine. I just wanted to go the extra mile for this and really, you know, take it to an ignorant, cringe AR place. And I think we took it there. Lots of fireballs. I would say this uh, Sharps Bros muzzle device definitely kept that flame going forward. I did feel it in my jaw, but probably not nearly as much as if we just had like a normal A2 on there. Now, KK does make their flash cans that are awesome. Um, this brinted grip got a little loose as expected i think everything got a little loose including my jaw and potentially my genitals however i say this was a success this kind of reminds me of like it's almost like a little wand you know like a harry potter wand you could be like out here in the field and the ops run up and you're just like fucking inspecto patronum anyway Thanks for watching another episode of PSR. See you in the next one. Bye. to get 10% off your order from KAK Industry, absolutely never in a million years, ever, use the code 10%. What's going on, everyone? Alrighty, so, let's see if, okay. Oh, that's overexposed.